here with Manila Road for What the Fast Podcast. And without further ado, let's get this started. Let's start with the name. Many times you said that Manila Road means the road of light to you. Is that how you look at your career in general, in your, in your in a journey for music, that you're going to a road, to an adventure and bringing the light of metal to people? First off, this is Mark Shelton. This is Phil Ross. <laughs> this is Nordy from Germany, and I'm Hell Roadie. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, actually, we didn't really have a special meaning for the name when it came about. Uh, it was the very first drummer, Ben Munkers, and I, and we were drinking and smoking weed in his kitchen, watching Monty Python on TV. <laughs> and uh, it was a couple of guys that were really fucked up <laughs> looking for a name for a band, and that's what we came up with. <laughs> All right. But, but in answer to your question, uh, you know, uh, I've thought many times that we had, you know, a pretty strong purpose to to bring a little more intelligent view to metal music, uh, and that's why we why I went for lots of lyrics with uh, historical mythological, you know, philosophical type things, but in truth, most of it's just to have fun and to be entertaining. That's what it's really all about for me. Good, good. Uh, however, you did not start as a heavy metal band. Your first records, like After Midnight Live and Invasion, were kind of in the heavy rock space, progressive vein. And what, was there a record or a song that puts you towards metal as opposed to the progressive stuff? Uh, if there was, it would have been maybe the, the change that Judas Priest made from the rock and roll All days. Right. To the, Sad Wings of Destiny. Yeah, yeah, class. sort of that, because I was, you know, I was a big Judas Priest fan, but uh, I'm not really sure that that's really what made it happen. I think more than anything, it's just a natural progression that happened with us. More okay. Than anything. Okay, okay. And the second album released, as we all know, was metal, but there's a catch. Uh, you did a whole album of recordings in 81 uh, called Dreams of Eschaton, mm -hmm. which was later released as Mask of the Beast. And many people believe, including myself, uh, that it's a better album than metal. Why, why, did, you, uh, why did you decide actually to shelve it, to, to just go, no, we're going to go there as opposed to here? Uh, the main reason was because uh, it, we didn't feel like it represented the sound of the band live. All right. And it really didn't. I mean, the band never really sounded like Invasion or Dreams of Eschaton live. And Dreams of Eschaton didn't include Aftershock and Time Trap and Venetian Sea. That was a demo recording that we did right. after that album right. was shelved. And we shelved that also. Uh, and we never did official mixes on those albums. What you're hearing on these releases is actually rough mixes we did. And uh, uh, so to me, for all those years, they were unfinished products that, and projects that uh, really weren't of high enough quality to release. But are you happy with the songs themselves, how they turn out? Some of them. Some yeah. Of them, yeah. Some Which of them. ones? I, I really like Avatar a lot. That's probably my favorite off of all of that stuff. But, you know, there's some others like Black Lotus, I still sort of like that. And Triumvirate, sort of cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Aftershock's definitely one of those songs that was leading into the more heavier, yeah. thrashier stuff that we did later on. Do you ever play live something from that? We did uh, Avatar sometime back. Uh, when 2008? Eight, 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 something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. It was in, Mars, uh, in Colmar, Colmar, France. Colmar, France. We did it there, but most generally, no, we don't do songs all right. like that album. All right, all right. And we come to the shining point, as many would say, Crystal Logic, your most popular album, and I know that uh, that's related to distribution and got good distribution and uh, related to flaming metal systems going up on that compilation. But why do you think this one's magical to many people? That's that's the starting well, point. I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the radio play here, you know, in, in, in Poland. Uh, All right. was the very beginning of the radio play. Yeah, yeah as far yeah. as we know, the yes, first yes. radio airplay in Europe was here in, on Radio Warsaw. Yes, yes it was. <laughs> yes, it was. And, well, that, that's a big... They do. Emphasis. Yeah. And, and I think because of that, uh, we were noticed uh, because of the uh, Flaming Metal System song. It sort of projected us into the international market a little bit. And uh, 
we uh, gained the attention of a Swedish distributor and then uh, that in turn uh, made important records distribution in America pay attention to us more and Green World distribution and a bunch of Dutch East India. There were several distributors that just sort of jumped on the bandwagon really mm -hmm. quick. And I think that's why the distribution got really All right. bigger right. and better right. for us at that point. Uh, but why do you think musically many people, uh, when they when they go to Manila Road, they go Crystal Logic? I don't think I'm a good one to answer it, that because I, I think it's more of a punk album, you know. Kind of. Sometimes it is. Necropolis is uh, a yeah, Necropolis. Doom, is punk. Yeah, yeah, Doom. It's Black Sabbath, punk, heavy metal. Uh, album. All of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah and, and, and maybe that's part of what the appeal is, is because that's when we really started fusing many styles of metal into one. Although yeah. this album has one song, very particular song. Feeling free again. Yes, that's what I'm going to go. <laughs> hey. uh, there's a rumor. That this was done as an attempt at a radio hit. That's correct. That is correct. Uh, and do you regret? Do you do you regret doing that? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I because I, I get stuck singing the damn thing. <laughs> yeah, Mark, yeah. I was supposed to supposed to ask you. Do you ever sing it live? Do you ever do it live? Uh, every every once every in a while. while. We're going to be doing the whole Crystal Logic album this year in its entirety in, in Las, Las Vegas, Vegas at All the right. Hard Rock Casino at the Psycho Vegas. Uh, show <laughs> which will be with King Diamond and um, uh, Ace Freely, so it's right. going to be a, a really good. And you're you're going to sing, uh, Hello, Hello Rody, You're going to sing, uh, Feel Free. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Mark, you don't, you might, you don't do it. No, I I, I just I, make him play guitar. <laughs> I, I just I just hate the fact that I wrote a line that said, "Hey, baby." Yeah, that's very. I but I, I love that song. Yeah. And it, it, it really, lots of people like it. It wasn't our idea. It wasn't my idea to uh, That's try was. and make a radio hit. It was the producer that we had at that time. Mm -hmm. That was what I was awesome. aiming at. But that I want to say something good. about Crystal Logic. In Germany, uh, we thought that Open the Gates is kind of the de debut album because it was the first one that has a really good distribution in, in Europe and uh, in Germany. And I think uh, when Black Dragon did that blue vinyl thing yeah. reissue, yeah. This is, uh, for most of the people, was the first time they ever noticed, oh, there was an album before Open the Gate. All right. All right. And I think this was the point when it started for mm -hmm. Crystal Logic. For Crystal in, Logic. Yeah. In, 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 at least in Germany, yeah. All right. right. Uh, so now we have past Crystal Logic, Exit Rick Fisher, Anti Render, Randy Trasher Fox. Why did Rick leave? Uh, he basically, Scott and I were really wanting to focus on heavier and faster material. And Rick really wanted to stay more of the space rock type. Stuff. All right. And how did you find Randy? And how would you compare Rick to Randy? Or Randy to Rick, Rick to Randy in terms of drumming? There's no comparison. Yeah, there's no comparison. Because that's, that's not a totally fair different, question. Two totally, <laughs> two totally different styles of drumming. Yeah, absolutely. So you can't really and compare them. No. Uh, they're both good for what they do. Absolutely. And uh, so there's no comparison there. Uh, uh, as far as how we found Randy, it was really very simple. Uh, he was recommended to us by a, a music store owner that we knew, John Miller, who also owned the recording studio we worked in all the time. And we auditioned him for about one minute. <laughs> and then I mean, he went, we, I heard him play. Yeah. I said, do something double kick because Rick wasn't very adept at uh, double doing kick. double kick stuff. And I said, do something with double kicks in it. And he, whipped off a thing that eventually ended up being the intro for uh, Heavy Metal to the World. Heavy and, Metal to the World. And I heard that and I said, okay, you're hard, come on. Uh, <laughs> is it true that his nickname did not come from Trash Metal, but the way uh, he played it, with it drums? Came, it came from him destroying his the drum drums. kit all the time. <laughs> and is ask, it? ask him. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. He, no. he was the drum guy. I was his roadie for, oh, for, for, God. Many, for the... How many, how many how many drum sets did you, did you go for regularly? Uh, he didn't break the drums themselves, but no. he broke cymbals, Skin. cymbals, sticks, sticks heads, heads <laughs> snare heads, snare, snare, snare heads, heads. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, rings and the snare. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, even when he was recording the Hellwell album yeah. uh, and working with us at rehearsing for the Keep It True, he was destroying stuff on our drum set in the studio. You know, it's like, damn, I'm gonna have to replace. Luckily, he bought everything. He was yeah, it's so, China. Yeah. Uh, is it true that he was not a metalhead? He was no, more into no, he's not a metalhead really. He's uh, he's into all styles of, of music, and metal uh, is not. If he would, he's a guitar player and a, and a, a keyboard, player, keyboard too. player also, and he doesn't play metal when he plays those instruments right. usually. 
Uh, the only reason that he played metal was because it's the one type of music that he could play on drums and play as bombastically as he does. I mean, he's like the metal version of Keith Moon. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Perfect. It sounds like it sounds like him. It sounds it's 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 a very distinct aspect when he comes in. When you listen to an album on, on which he, on, on when, when he's playing, it's it's very distinct. You know oh, that's him. Oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, even on the new How Well, album, yeah. You know, People instantly really, know it. You instantly know that. Oh, that's fucking Thrasher again. Yeah. Uh, you often said, Mark. You often said that Open the Gates is the true beginning of another world. It's fully grown. I don't remember saying that. I found that in an interview. <laughs> really? Yes. It's 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 fully grown form. Why? What would you uh, say was if that's not for if you? that's yeah. yeah. Well, I do remember saying that. The Deluge was my favorite. That's my favorite from that period of time. But, but, but you said once I found it in an interview that that, that from Open the Gates onwards, it's it's more how you envision Miller Road heavier and uh, probably more, probably, probably just because that of that. Right yeah. there, that's well, probably why I said that was because I I think we were starting to find our our niche. Oh right. You know more at that point. Uh, uh, in a sense, Crystal Logic was sort of the start of that as well. Or You know, in truth, I would say two songs uh, that really led us towards that that style, which would have been Queen of the Black Coast and Cage of Mirrors. The Cage of Mirrors, mm -hmm. the epic, the epic style. Yeah, right. And and on mystification, when you went towards mystification, uh, you just you even more openly flirted with trashy riffing, uh, combined with with, with with those epic uh, epic stylistic things. But you went towards a direction towards horror, towards Erdogan Allan Poe and the lyrics. Why the change towards more kind of power, trash, speed metal thing and, and, and the lyrical change? Well, that's an easy I, question. I'm not, I'm not sure. sure the lyrical change happened then. Maybe it was that we was did, most prominent then. did, did um, more versions yeah. of that style of stuff. But like Cage Mirrors, you know, yeah. it's definitely sort of a horror story. But, mm. but on, on Mystification, everything was, almost everything was, I would, I would say, uh, kind yeah, of horror. Yeah, quite a bit. I mean, obviously you got things like Dragon Star that had yeah. nothing to do, do with horror at mm. all. But uh, I don't know. Do you, I, I think uh, we've, you know, we've always said that every album was different. Yeah, and it's a, it's a I think that was I think that was just something that Mark felt at the time that he time. wanted to express, you know, his love of horror, f you know, and reading of Edgar Allan yeah, right. and and so on and so forth. As, so. as far as the style of music, yeah. the thrash style, I think we really started approaching that more on the daily. Yeah, yeah. but but on the mystification, it's even more pronounced. It's uh, more I think it's just because of the production. Production, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. maybe uh, this one song, uh, up from the crypt, maybe that. Yeah, because little, that's definitely that's, a thrash. Yeah, song. that's just. But uh, yeah. open the gate. Uh, the day which appeared much heavier to me than open the gate. Yeah, like yeah. Song, yeah. friction and mass is yeah. definitely yeah. a thrashy type song yeah. to me. You know. <laughs> 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 Pretty thrashy, man. Exactly. And, and on, on mystification, you had many issues and and, and the things with uh, with the track list, with the mix. Uh, the Sintana still rage. You had a different mix, different uh, cover art. Uh, can you? Why? Why was that? That we got different track lists, different mixes, different cover arts for different markets. Uh, well, uh, the first, first mystification. Go ahead. Well, first of all, the I think the track listing on the. Uh, French version on the Black Dragon version was different than the American version. Yes, that's right. right. Because uh, we did we did the American version ourselves on our own. We label, wrote Risk Records, yeah. Yeah. and and uh, then they did a different version of track yeah. listing. I think, if I remember rightly, and uh, a different mastering. Yeah, and it yeah. had a different back cover. Yeah, as well. Uh, uh, things were changing quite a bit with Black Dragon at that point, but. Uh, Uh, later on, when Sentinel Steel reissued it, uh, they remixed it and remastered it, and uh, then they had the Hildebrandt Brothers uh, art cover instead yeah. of the original. Yeah, yes, 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 and yes. although I think, if I remember rightly, we actually had both covers. Yeah, on, yeah, on, yeah. On Sentinel Steel, Sentinel Steel did. You could, did. You could put whichever yes. one Sentinel you liked Steel the most did it, in did it, there. Did yeah. many CDs like that. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that album was just. Uh, It was interesting. We went to a totally different studio. We were trying to try using uh, people that were supposedly spent a, lot a better hell than of us. a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, we spent a lot of money. A lot going of to money. Nashville, working in Al Green's uh, studio. Wow. And uh, or I'm, I said Nashville. I meant Memphis. Memphis. Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, uh, and we worked with Paul Zaleski, 
who had worked with ZZ Top and had done a lot of recordings with other really big bands. And we, we thought we were making the right step forward. And this was on the, uh, on, on the uh, instigation of the label that we were with. Black Dragon was actually telling us at that point that we should look for a, a big time producer and stuff like this. And so we did, and it really sort of turned out really shitty for us because uh, it seemed like, yeah, maybe they knew what they were doing was easy top and stuff like that, but, but they, with, they had no clue what to do yeah, with us. Yeah, I can imagine that. And so, it, and it's still prevalent today when we go to uh, shows and we have their sound crew uh, doing the sound, and they don't have any idea how, how to, to mix handle, us. Yeah, or how to how handle to, a band. It's that's really you. easy. It's so simple. It is. We're really simple band. Very simple to, band, to and they make it so difficult. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I can you imagine know? that. And um, <clears throat> I can imagine that. But the album definitely got better when it was remixed because uh, somebody that was a metalhead, yeah, did re it. Remixed That's it, and of course, Sentinel Steel, uh, when they put it out as a reissue, even though they had lots of bands like Attacker and Gothic yeah. Knights and others that were, uh, you know, putting out new albums with them. Mystification as a reissue was the biggest selling album I, I had on yeah, the label. Yeah, I know, I know. I talked talk to, to the owner of Sinister. Oh, Dennis. And he said, yeah, yeah, Dennis is amazing. Cool. He's a nice amazing guy. guy. Yeah. But would you, would you, which, which one, which mix do you prefer? Because Shadow Kingdom put, uh, put Mystification out now with the original mix and the original cover and the original track list. Yeah, well, they also, on the same release, I think they had both mixes, right? No, this was our version. That's Golden oh, Core. One, that's Golden uh, Core, that, I think. Oh, that's Golden Core. Okay. Yeah, that's Golden Core. I, 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 I did a remaster <laughs> of the original tapes that was transferred by right. uh, the guy from Corruptionit in Germany, the original master tapes, and on mm -hmm. CD1 it was the Sentinel Steel so, and on the uh, And on the CD2 it's the original one. It's the original one. So yeah. which one Which one do you prefer, actually, uh, in terms of sound? There, there's certain aspects of both yeah. that I like oh, better right. than the other, actually. Right. But I think for the most part, I like the Sentinel Steel. Uh, right. I do too. All right. it, it's cleaner, it's clearer, it's more pronounced. But yep. there's certain little nuances here and there that I think maybe I got used to yeah. on the first <coughs> release. That it's like, oh, that's not the same. And For sure, the European pressing, what uh, um, Black Dragon had another guy mastering it, a master of the master oh, back God. in the days. Yeah. And I think they fucked up something. There. <laughs> <laughs> really. Uh, there's a rumor that the song, The Book of Skelos, was supposed to be included in Out of the Abyss. That, that is true. true. Oh, that is true. Rumor was already... That, that is true? That is true. Uh, why, yeah, why, why, or did, this didn't happen, but why? David Chastain. David Chastain said, yeah, no. Nope. He, he's the one that owns uh, Leviathan, Leviathan Records. Records. And he, he, didn't, he didn't really like the song, so... That's amazing. That's one of the best songs. I, I agree. Wrote. Was it not due to length restrictions and not wanting to do a double? Instead of a single LP, uh, I'm not. I've sure. heard that before, not from you, but uh, no, because I think I think we were uh, already into the CD era okay. at that point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Viathan we released out of the Abyss on so, CD. So it, it could have been a bonus cut, even and it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, and it, no, it, it, I, it, I think it's because it had something about sacrificing babies. <laughs> <laughs> so what? It's a metal band. Who cares? Yeah, I, I know. God. It's, it's, I mean, it was. Well, I mean, that it, song was, you know, it was banned, on. you know, on on a release in South Korea. So really, they said no. Uh, that's saying like that's incorrect. Or, or, was, uh, prophecy. I mean, the prophecy. Oh, the prophecy. Oh, yeah. All right. The prophecy. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, chaos was banned in South Korea. But that's and there was also there was of skills too. Was not on that release. I have the disc at home. Oh, the, the Korean, yeah. Korean vinyl pressing or CD pressing? CD no, CD pressing. Yeah, there was a CD pressing. You're right. Pressing. You're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah, he is right. I, I, there was a CD pressing. I stand in corrected Korea. there because yeah. uh, uh, I just forgot actually <laughs> that it was on Kurt the Chaos. <laughs> yeah, it's a bonus track. It was included. There will be a, a, a really, 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 really cool reissue of Out of the Abyss soon with that song now with that song yeah. on it because uh, he found the master tapes of yeah, the tape. first mix of out of from 1980 there's, there's another mix from like 1980 better first mix back. yeah and we found some bonus tracks from 87 uh and released stuff we found we found some stuff on a cassette also yeah. shark and i yeah. one night that everybody forgot about <laughs> with some and pre pre sessions i have, I have right. tons of stuff 
you know, it's and that's in stored the, everywhere in, in the studio or the background of the studio and in a shoebox. He, he, yeah. he, he likes to spelunk, as we call it, you know, <laughs> dig in the. So, so there's going to be a, re- a lot of the abyss with unreleased stuff and a, a new mix, and, right? And, and yeah. uh, co- uh, co- um, um, what uh, books of Skelos will be a, now an official part. Oh, of official part of, of, of the yeah. abyss. All right. Yeah, going to out of the abyss. Some people criticize that album uh, for being. Well, not, not a trash metal album, but too trashy. Like it's like uh, people. Some people liked it for that. Some people said it's good, but it lacks the epic touch mm. that Manila Road had on previous albums. How do you how do you react to that? Well, if it would have had books of skill off songs, it, it had the epic. <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to. It would have had more epic stuff yeah. on it. Yeah. But at the same time. Uh, you know, you've got Return of the Old Ones and Helicon on there. Yeah, I think yeah, those yeah. are very epic. Whitechapel's epic. Whitechapel's is epic, but it's yeah, very trashy. It's very trashy yeah. too. Uh, yeah. Did you did you did you listen to all of? I mean, Midnight Meat Train's my favorite. Dude, I love that one. Oh yes. You know? yes, I love the record. So, those are the highest notes I ever sang right. in my life. Yeah, oh, I love the I love the record. I love the vocal performance on the record. It's unique for you. Lots of shrieks in a King Diamond vein, I yeah. would say. Yeah. And were you listening? to... Uh, no, a lot of trash no, metal at the time. Not really. I I think it was more because Randy and I had this sort of uh, dare going on between the two of us to see who could go faster, yeah, go faster, heavy, faster and heavier, heavier. and uh, and longer and longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we yeah. Just, it was a nightmare, man. It was a complete it was a nightmare. nightmare. It was a great. Really? Nightmare. Yeah. I mean, it was a nightmare for him. It was a great. It was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. it was like, nightmare. like as far as Randy and his playing, that that's what you mean? Yeah. <laughs> because uh, if I had to fix something, you know, oh, that God. was one of the things that is our motto: is we don't quit. The band keeps going, even no matter something. What. No matter, no matter what. what. Yeah, the show must go the on. Show must and go on. so, if I had to fix something, I had to know exactly where he was going to be at. Precisely the point, and in if those I didn't, kind of songs, oh God. and if I didn't, I was getting creamed. I mean, I had an eardrum broke, I oh had knuckles busted open. You know, uh, you name it. Um, he he abused me. And, um, <laughs> yeah, but Rody abuse. Rody. Yeah. It's it's, a, it, it's interesting, Mark. What you told me a little bit ago about how you hit those notes, why you had that extra range for a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, well. It, I, I developed chronic laryngitis in 1984 when yeah, we were doing uh, the Open the Gates album, and uh, um, I went through these vocal treatments, you know, where they were uh, injecting me with steroids and stuff, and uh, doing all sorts of stuff to my my uh, my my body to revive my vocals. Of course. And when I got through with all the treatments, I had this insanely high, high voice <laughs> falsetto. <laughs> And so, uh, since I discovered I had that, I started using it a lot, and obviously I abused it as well because uh, during uh, one of the Circus Maximus shows in Wichita, I let out a really super high scream and then actually tore one of my vocal cords oh, doing it. So. so it begs the question, who sings those songs live? Uh, Usually he does nowadays. It depends. Either that or if I'm singing the song, I just don't do the high. Oh, you don't do the, the high vocals. And right. uh, what's the song we did with Randy in January, Brian from Out of the Abyss? Uh, War in Heaven, I think. You did. War in Heaven. War in Heaven. Yeah. Yeah. He he's the one. Nails, yeah, he right. nails he was, it. He nails it. Nails it. that album. And see, there's another song off that album that I think is epic mm-hmm. and not thrashy. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and there, there will be a really, really, really cool reissue of that album. <laughs> no, but I, I, I was like, I was like many friends for some many years. I didn't. Uh, it was my least. <laughs> 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 It was my least favorite album of the eighties from Manila Road. It's but one now of my with top this favorites, I go yeah, to but, that one. But now with this mix that he found, uh, the original mix that made in Kansas, I finally love that album. To me, it's one of the best. Uh, I, I use the term cutting riffs. It's one of the best cut riffs. That's one of the best cut riffs ever in metal. The way they're played, the way they're downstroke, and I love that. That's that's amazing to me. So, but <laughs> on, Courts of, on Courts of Chaos, you went for the only recorded cover by Manila Road, which yeah. was DOA by Blood Rock, very obscure kind of song. Why that one? But uh, it's, it, fit, it fits, it fits yeah, Manila it fits, Road perfectly. It's a simple answer to why, right. why that song. It's the only song all three of us could agree on. <laughs> yep. 
and that's a that's it absolute truth we all had different ones we wanted to do i mean and we went through there were so lists. many lists yeah, yeah we had the list was lists. this big oh yeah. it was huge and but there was always one of us going no, no. i don't like that song yeah. and finally we hit doa by a blood rock and we all went that's why that yeah one. okay and scott was like yeah i love that song and Randy was like, well, I'm the one that suggested it, so yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but did you play any older covers live? Uh, only in the very in the early days. days. Yeah, very yeah. old days. Early, early days. Very early days. Hey, like Joe. Invasion. Yeah, we did like Jimi Hendrix covers. All right. And stuff that's like the, that. That's, now, that's, when, I had, when I was playing with Circus Maximus, we did some... Uh, Next other thing. we did some other cover songs we did a black sabbath yeah, Adley. So cool. we actually even played some semi-modern stuff like <laughs> alice and james oh god we did that would, we, that would be awesome we, we, we did a version we did a version of 21st century schizoid oh band, god yes but not yes. april wine style we did it king crimson yes style. yes and yes my yeah, god man. that bridge section that da, yes. da, 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 you could do you could do that with man of the that is that fucking would be terrible to play live <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, for, it's, it's so also, hard but also be, I don't, uh, it, it definitely gave me a big appreciation of uh the king crimson but, music, but to get back Fritz. to the courts of chaos uh album i think the doa thing was something where Randy could really feature his keyboard, keyboard and playing. drum playing at the same time, and I think that was that, that a one. big focus. Yeah, and that was that. Well, that's why he, he know, suggested it. Suggested, suggested the song, and I just loved the song because it had fucking gnarly lyrics. You know? <laughs> it, it, yes, it and, does. And we thought it was good. It was actually banned in the United States also after it came out. And so I, I thought it was a great song to have because I thought, well, shit, maybe it'll get banned for us. <laughs> Again. Yeah, we'll get real publicity. Much. Yeah, yeah we'll but, but Blood publicity. Rock uh, didn't really like it. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't. No, well, they hated just it. Just one guy was yeah. all right. The guy that owns Ledgefield Music. Right. You yeah. know, I that's who I went to to make sure we had the rights to do it, and he was all excited about it and thought it was great. We were doing it, and then I sent him a copy of the finished cut, and his reaction was. Hmm. Yeah, um, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's okay. But I don't, I don't. It's pretty guitar heavy. I don't really care for it that much. And Manila oh, wrote his guitar. Heavy. That was Manila wrote his guitar heavy. Yeah. Yeah. That was Revelation. The, yeah, and that was the last time I, I ever talked, talked to him. <laughs> I'm like, God. I'm like, done. Years done. Ago. Yeah, he was done. done. With, yeah. He was done with me at that point. Well, I'm so happy that you suggested this later song, Breach of Lees, or something like that. Uh, was it the name of this Blood Rot song on a later album, Breach? Release of Breach, Breach of Lease. You what? The I don't know. What is he talking about? I don't know, man. I have no idea. He's your drummer. Bunch of Fleas? What? A bunch of Fleas. It's a Blood Rock 3. It's a length song. No idea. Okay, forget it. But this guy. if I. If I is it Breach of Lies? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's. Breed of leech. <laughs> We're gonna throw no this idea. out and we'll write you. Yeah, we will yeah, write yeah. you in all, two all years from now. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have to, if you had to, uh, that begs the question. If you had to settle on a cover song now, all four of you, which what what will be the chances? dancing queen? By <laughs> 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 We'd go high quality Swedish with some type of Ace of Bass song, of course. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting No, I'd, I'd go for a Tony Bennett song, maybe. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's probably the same the same situation again. Yeah, everybody would we'd say no. We'd probably not be able to find one that we no. all agreed on. So, somebody would go, Exciter, no. And to tell you the truth, no. I don't think I'd want to do a cover song again. I think DOA was yeah, the, the that's, one and only. That's perfect. That, That, that makes sense. If I would suggest something, I would do from a dry, dry camel from dust. <laughs> oh, no, I might be okay with that. That's, 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 no, that's might be good. Okay with because it's not a no. real... Well, <laughs> no. Yeah, no, nobody knows that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, let's go to a, a darker topic now. Can you explain? Oh, you'll have to turn the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> with, with, like, in detail, the whole Circus Maximus Manila Road fiasco with Black Dragon and generally the issues with Black Dragon Records. They just wanted to try to release something to make more money. And they thought the, by releasing the it... By, way, that's, by, that, by that, releasing that, it as Manila Road, they wanted to make money. And that was, that was yeah, what it comes that, down that, to. And, and I was very upset about it. Yep. You know, because it was not my idea and I didn't really agree to it. 
it was sort of already done before I had it, a chance. It kind of killed yeah. Circus Maximus, right? It, it actually killed the band. The band, because the other two band members were really upset about it. Absolutely. I'm not, yeah. I'm not, uh, I'm not surprised in the slightest. They yeah. did you a uh, Tony Iommi thing. He wanted to put out Seven Star as his solo album, and they said, no, Black Sabbath. Uh, yeah. And see, that's the same type of situation. Yeah, and exactly. I, I feel for Tony on that. He, he should have been able to have his way because it's his music. Yeah. And I, and I felt the same way, that yeah. hey, this is my choice. It shouldn't be the label's choice. Uh, but, you know, the problems with Black Dragon actually started long before that. Absolutely. Yeah, what was that? What was that? What that was that the apex? The... The central part, the, the uh, that was when I finally decided that yeah, I'm pretty much done with them. Yeah, but yeah. the label was but, done anyway. I think yeah, the label, the label was also already good. going so far down. Yeah. But we were in a day and age then that it was really hard to even get a label deal anywhere yeah. because metal was on nineties. Uh, yeah, yeah. At least but, classic metal. But what really happened with Black Dragon was uh, their major distribution point was New Rose Distribution in France, and it got shut down by the government. And they, they went out of business, and at that point, uh, they lost all of their their big distribution. They tried to work with important records themselves. They made important mad through <laughs> business political issues or whatever that were going on. I don't know, but important wouldn't deal with them anymore. And then uh, and then because we had been on Black Dragon, important didn't want to deal with us anymore either. And that's why Courts of Chaos in America only came out on a cassette with, as Mark Shelton, Quartz Chaos, instead of Manila Road. All right. And so a lot of this was just stuff that happened that was totally out of our control. All right. You know, as so we Circumstances did. happened and... Absolutely. And, all right. But, and that's when things started going really bad with us and Black Dragon, and um, we stopped getting paid as well as we should, and things just went really sour. Was this the reason, or was this the main reason that the band broke up because you were bro broken up no. for two years right from 92 to 94 no uh it had a lot well, of issues you're right on the date you're right on the date. right but it had nothing it was the, it was all the, internal. the members internal it internal. internal it was all internal uh, all you know right. scott it was really bad into drugs and alcohol mm -hmm. uh randy wasn't and, and uh, they, they, and they clashed. clashed and they, they clashed, clashed and they couldn't do anything together they all didn't right. even want to be in a studio together. as a matter of fact you know, the courts of chaos album we recorded that whole album without Randy and Scott being together in the studio at any at given time. time. Mm -hmm. It sounds that it sounds very well meshed for the, if if we take that into service. That's because we had a really great engineer. Yep. All right. Yep. Larry Funk was a really great engineer yep. that worked at Miller Cave, and and he knew how to deal with your he, type of he, band. He knew how. To, well, he had dealt with us for years and for years. Right. Before he that. put up with Manila Road. Oh, for years. <laughs> put up. He made it sound funky. <laughs> Yeah, he actually had a platinum album for SWV Sisters with Voices oh later, God. later on. Oh God! So he was so funny combination though. <laughs> yeah, but Sister he, with he, Voices in Manila he, Road. He worked with Aretha Franklin and Stevie Wonder and people like that after that, and so that just shows you how talented mm -hmm. he, he was, and he could work with any style of music. And uh, he was, uh, you know, even Noidy says that he thinks that the the mixing and the the production on Circus Maximus was one yeah. of the best that he'd heard. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes. And, and yes. that yes. was all due to Larry Funk. Larry Funk's production. You know? right. yeah. When did you get the idea or, or when did you get the message that you were a kind of a cult band, especially in Europe? Was it when in 2000 when you were it invited to yeah, Bang Your Head? It was in 2000 when we came to Bang Your Head and we saw a sea of Manila Road shirts that had sold out like that before mm -hmm. the day we even played. Uh, it just totally blew us away and made us realize that, oh wow, uh, we aren't a forgotten band. You know, there's people that really know about us and want to see us and, and it reignited the flame to make sure that we started. We were already working on an album, but we were working on it as a, as a solo project. Solo project. Solo project. Shot project. Shot yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was Brian and I that were right. working on writing that project together. And uh, as a matter of fact, almost all the drum parts are drum parts he invented on that album. And 
Uh, yeah, we forced Scott Peters to play <laughs> one here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember in the late 90s, I thought Manila Road is, has disbanded in Germany because the internet was new and then I decided to do a fan page, you know, as a fan and look, all the, put all the albums on that and, and at one point I did a so forum, <laughs> forum on it and god damn this forum was crowded by Greek people and I thought, oh my god, there are more people than who know Man Manila, Manila Road. Road and at one point he was on that. It, it, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story, um, you know, Napster. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, Napster was big, you know, late 90s, mm. and um, I just, you know, I was just new to getting on it, and I really didn't like it, you know, because I wasn't big in sharing music, okay? Um, I was big on buying it and having it as my possession. Yeah, we, knew, we knew that the bands weren't making money. Right, yeah. and so I was just wanting to get on there and see, you know, what Manila Road was on there, and fuck, man. Oh my God! <laughs> it was, it, it, so, 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 so yeah. So I started messaging people, you know, and saying, "Hey, you know, stop this bullshit." And it was like, "Well, who are you?" And I was like, um, "I'm Hell Roadie, and I will come wherever you're at and, <laughs> and fuck you up." <laughs> and, I'm Hell Roadie, I'll fuck and so, you up. So, so they didn't really believe me until it's like, "Listen, man, you, you know, I I live in Wichita." I, I've been to Roadie for, for Manila Road for many years now, and they were saying, no, this is bullshit. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go get Mark Shelton, okay? This cannot be true. Yes. So I said, come tomorrow, 6 o'clock, I'll be on here. So I get Mark over, I get on, and I was like, listen, look at this, dude. It's like, all right, pussies, <laughs> all right, talk your shit now. Mark Shelton's in the house. Silent. And everybody was... <laughs> You know, there was nothing. I was like, say something. He's right here typing to you now. Yes, this is Mark Shelton. You know, and they and were like, oh my God. Like, you know? yeah. Shit just went down. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, you know, that was the kind of the deal where I knew something was big with Manila Road. Uh, we're into the comeback, the, the new Manila Road period, as I call it. And why such a long wait before Atlantis Rising? Uh, Real easy. Uh, we, yeah. were, we were making babies and having families. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and it wasn't just that, but uh, we really couldn't find a deal with anybody. Right. All right. Uh, there, the like we said before in the '90s, the metal scene just really collapsed everywhere. Yeah. And, it was grunge uh, everywhere. Yeah. Grunge, uh, death metal, black metal, yeah, things like yeah, that. Well, in America, it was, it was more was just grunge. 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 Yeah. It was more the Seattle sound of stuff yep. that was happening, you know, Nirvana. Pearl Jam, like Nirvana. And uh, not only that, but the fall of the vinyl empire really hurt yeah. all of the small labels. Most of the small labels went out of business mm. because Almost of all of them. Yeah. And, Damn right. Uh, and so it, it was just a struggle. We, there was actually only about two years that we weren't very active. And then... Uh, I put the band back together with Randy and Brian's brother yeah, yeah, yeah. and Harvey, and, and we, we we played in, in Wichita the, in and around the area, around, yeah. around the area quite a bit. We just never uh, could find the financial backing to actually go and make another album, <clears throat> and it wasn't until many years later that about '98 was when we started getting equipment and stuff to think about. Do, you know, do, hey, do, let's let's let's, do let's it get ourselves. back in. You know, yeah, let's yeah, do something. We decided to do it ourselves, and he was very instrumental in, uh, you know, getting me energetic about doing that type of thing. And uh, uh, once we came to Bang Your Head and did the, uh, the uh, Bang Your Head show in Ballingen in mm -hmm. 2000, uh, that's when we got uh, a lot of offers based off of a demo of this uh, well, Atlantis Rising Shark project, which was right. the early... Atlantis Rising. Yeah, right. Crystal Logic yeah. was already re-released yeah. by, yeah. by, by, yeah. by Iron Glory. By Iron Glory. Which... It was the first version I saw on CD, but it pains me when it pained me a lot when I saw it because uh, Flaming Metal Systems was in the middle of the album as number three. Yeah. I, I, I was like, damn, why do you have to do that? That, that? that pisses me off. Yeah, and I don't know why they did that. I asked, actually asked them not to, and they did it anyway. Oh, okay. But they were also the same label that... Uh, Eliminated uh, Throne of Lies. Throne of Lies off from of Spiral, Spiral Castle. Castle. Yeah. yeah, and they did it. They they already went to the pressing plant before they asked me. They he, he wrote me and asked me, "Oh, is it okay if we don't put this on?" And I was like, album? "No." And I was like, "No, absolutely not. It's part of the album." 
Well, and we did it anyway. And, and he goes, oh, well, that's too bad because we've already sent it to the pressing plant. Oh, God. Like, well, why did you ask? Why don't you just tell me that you did that? And so once again, I was sort of pissed off about that. And, uh, and yeah, I, I, I get tired of labels doing that type of shit to me. I get it. But we will have a bonus track then for the reissue. <laughs> there is a bonus cool. track on the Shadow Kingdom. That's it's good. And who, oh, but it going really back to, to, to uh, Brian, uh, what, what prompted your, that's the second part of the question, what prompted your entrance on vocals? And on drums in one, in, in one song, if I remember well. On Atlantis Rising. Uh, yeah, I played on Switch. On Switch. Um, I think a lot of it was uh, just to, to be able to tour uh, and to be able to do multiple shows instead of just one in and one, one and out. Done. Because that's a very expensive for promoters to just bring us over for one yeah. show and done. Mm -hmm. uh, and in order for us to, to, to live the dream, you know, we had to play live and we had to come to where our fans were at, you know? I mean, yeah, we have fans in the U.S., uh, but the fans in Europe were really calling for us hard, and we yeah. had to, you know, I felt in my heart that um, this was what we had to do. Did and you find it hard at first, to sing all the old stuff? No. He'd been doing it all the time oh, right. in the background. Right. Right. Yeah. We, I mean, I, I would sit back behind the stacks, and, the two and stacks and, and mimic, you know. All right. Ah, you, know, <laughs> and, you know. With and, your brother, like you told me, your brother in school, you'd come home and you'd be like, what the hell are you doing? Because his little brother, who was also a Manila Road for type, would be playing his Manila Road records. Oh, God. You know, playing bass, you know. To, to the records. Learning. All right. You know, to it, you know, and... That's how Harvey uh, learned how to play bass. bass. Was, Too many other road records. Playing Manila Road, yeah, right? Cool. Uh, and nowadays, in the new period, in the in the after Reformation period, you're productive as hell, I could say, <laughs> record after record after record. Uh, if you had to point to a favorite album in the new Manila Road period from Atlantis Rising onwards, always, which one? Always the new one. Always the new one. Always the newest one. The, the usual new. musician answer. Yeah, the newest yeah, one. But but. Uh, I'm really proud of Blessed Curse. I think that's a really excellent album. Uh, you know, and you guys, whether you look at it as just mm -hmm. the first CD or, or even the, the, second, or the yeah. collection of the two, I think it's uh, by far the best production. What's your favorite of the new ones? Uh, From the Reformation period? Yeah. Gates of Fire. Gates of Fire. What about you, no, That would be my Blessed answer. Curse. Mine's Voyager. Voyager, that's mine. Yeah. That's mine because I hear... Uh, Battery in there and some black oh, yeah. metal and oh, yeah. things yeah, like that. I love that. Why he likes it. Well, I, I like it, but I also I really like his brother's bass playing on it too. Unfortunately, this beautiful bastard's not on that record, but um, mm -hmm. the songwriting oh. shines through, yeah. and your brother's bass playing is excellent. Yeah. And after the Reformation, got an amazing drummer in Corey. Uh, many people, even in Poland, thought of Corey as a prodigy, as a drummer prodigy. Mm -hmm. Why did he leave? Uh, he, he got in trouble. He got in trouble all in right. the States and he can't tour. All right. So, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. That's, it's pretty sad. At the time, he couldn't. He couldn't. And uh, we, he, still we had to, he still can't get out of the United all right. States. All right. And we, we had to... You had to go we, on to show we, 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 had, we had to make a business decision and we did. Uh, but going back to Nudie, what, who's your favorite Manila Road drummer? If you got to point to one. No, That's no. so easy. <laughs> Randy Fox. Yeah. Randy, Randy the Trasher Fox. Yeah, it's 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 uh, been that from day one. For yeah. Him. yeah, all yeah. right. Since he was I a think, teen. I, th I think I, I can't imagine him on metal or invasion. No, Be not really. Because <laughs> Rick Fisher was so perfect for for, for that kind of sound. In Crystal Logic, I could imagine Randy in some songs, Rick in some songs, but still, this is um, this is two periods of drumming. And is Randy's parts are they the hardest ones to play? No. Not really. I just told him when we had a coffee down there that. For some reason, Queen of the Black Coast Queen is really of the Black exhausting Coast. for me to play, <laughs> while the Mask of the Red Death is or just Mel like... Or Storm. Ah, yeah, it depends on the... Oh, on the all right, <laughs> all right, all right. And this is an important question for me. How important is the visual side, the visual presentation, the artwork uh, on, on the records for you? The artwork's always been really important uh, yeah. for me. It has to have that sort of... Uh, those other epic, 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 those epic, 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 it's got to have that epic fantasy yeah. appeal, you know. And uh, yeah, it's got to it's got to be something that's hopefully as cool as Frank Frazetta's artwork. You know? Yeah, but because I always but always the Eric Lenore, there's yeah. just never anything that's that's untouchable. Cool that's untouchable. That's untouchable to me. Yeah, that, I saw those. I saw Open the Gates. I'm like, 
I'm done. And and, and we've got a good friend of ours that's trying to get that artwork the for us. Yeah. You know, he's really trying to find that artwork. Yeah, we have the rights to the artwork, yes. right? Erwin. Erwin. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I know our French, yep. French friend. Then. Hi, Erwin. <laughs> yep. uh, but speaking of the feeling, uh, Manila wrote to me, or to many people always, have, has been a band which puts much emphasis on lyrics as much as music. Mm -hmm. And uh, although you go for the fantasy type of stuff, the, the, the Michael Moorcock type of stuff, uh, the Lovecraft type of stuff, I'm feeling that, and, and when I read it, uh, there's a unique type of flavor to them in the, in the means that you always try to go for the positive vibe, the uplifting vibe, the strong will vibe with, with the lyrics of Manila Road. Most usually, yes. I, I try and keep a positive approach to almost everything that Manila Road does. and. Uh, because, you know, along the way, even though the name got came about in just sort of a haphazard way, uh, over the years, you know, it is true that the, the road of light definition sort of became the idea. And so, uh, uh, but I, I don't, I don't try and talk about politics. I do, I do crap on religion an awful lot because I don't crap on it. Yeah, yeah, I do. I shit on religion a lot because I, I hate organized religion. I think religion is uh, a good part of the reason we have so much war and, and so much bullshit and so much bullshit. in the world, you know. Fanaticism, basically. And, and, mm -hmm. and obviously this, the misguided philosophies of ISIS and stuff like that That's prove, prove exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but, yeah, I, I, we always try and uh, present a positive, you know, answer or a positive morality base for the most part. But in truth, it's still all about entertainment to me. And uh, I try not to get very political because uh, I don't think it's up to musicians to be politicians. Yeah. Uh, I think it's up to us to be entertainers. That's what we're supposed to be. Yeah. And so I try and uh, right. I try and keep myself centered on being um, an entertainer. Being an entertainer. And something that uh, I've always been interested in history and anthropology, archaeology, that type of stuff, mythology, uh, ancient philosophy, and everything. And so a lot of our lyrics center on that type of stuff because uh, it's what's interesting to me. And that the truth is, is that when it comes to Manila Road or anything that I've done musically. Uh, I'm just following my own whims, my own things that I like. I'm not really trying to write a song to please all the fan base or to please, you know, people. I tried that once with Feeling Free again, and I thought and I failed miserably. <laughs> yeah. And so, babies loved it. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> so I, I still to this day just try and just please myself with the music. And I figure if I'm happy with it, then I'm going to put my own passion into it. And if other people like it, that's fucking cool. And if they don't, well, you know. Tough shit. Tough shit, that's what I liked, you know. And uh, so that's, Your what, vision. that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, were you aware at the, at the time uh, or when you were recording Crystal Logic and Open the Gates and the Deluge that there were pockets of bands all around the US, particularly, that were trying to do kind of the same vibe like you? Like, I'm talking about uh, Warlord. Mm -hmm. Early Man of War, uh, Kurt Angle, mm -hmm. things like that. Were you aware of them? Were, did you play with I, them? I, I was obviously aware of Man of War because they were pretty big. Yeah. Right? Uh, and I actually love their Battle of Hymns album. You know, Hell the first one. The first uh, one. Hell to England. England. Yeah, That's yeah, Brian. Into Glory, right? I liked yeah. that one too. Uh, uh, Sirius Angle, yeah, I was, oh, I was aware of Battle them. Battle Hymns. And, uh, uh, but, you know, I've never really thought that Sarah Thungle and us were very much alive. Not musically, but the vibe is... Uh, maybe, vibe is maybe, the, maybe the vibe because they were into the fantasy. Yeah, the epic stuff, stuff too. You know, uh, as far as Warlord, I really liked their first EP a lot, but... Um, Deliver Us. But that's about it. Yeah. All right. I totally yeah. agree with you. Over yeah. the years, the fans decided that... Warlord, Manila Road, Sirith Ungol and Heavy Load from Sweden yeah. yes. are the four big... Epic metal bands. And I agree with Heavy Load because I love yeah. Heavy Load. Yeah, but still, heavy load. each band is so I, different. And yeah. I, I was actually influenced a little bit by Heavy Load. Really? So, yeah, yeah. You heard Heavy Load like, but at the time oh, yeah. when you were... As, yeah. as Kim, he has it. all the original albums at home with all That's the amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I was That's wanking amazing. in front of that. 
Doc Wayne, True story, man. I've seen it. Do you know? Do you know that heavy that was, are coming? That, that was before I put it in. <laughs> oh, I totally forgot that we are good friends of the two brothers now. Since yeah, uh, yeah, they yeah. Were, they're, they're coming back. Yeah, well, well maybe, maybe. I hope oh, so. I know, I they're getting really, reissued. I, I really hope so. Don't yeah, the reissues are going to yeah. happen. Finally, but, really but I really hope they they come back. They yeah. they do a, at least a couple a shows. You know. They're gonna have to, man. Oh yeah, they're, they're gonna. The fans, have to. the fans are gonna. We've actually become friends with them now because yeah. uh, we, we had them on our set. We, our, met, we met our guest list. We met them at the Keep It True, yeah. and we became very friendly with each other at that point. And then we uh, put them on our guest list in mm -hmm. our Stockholm Stop show with uh, Lee Edling. This is uh, this yeah. month. Yeah. This yeah. month, yeah, yeah. In this tour. Yeah, uh, when we played with Doomsday Kingdom, Lee Edling's new band, which were really killer too. Yeah. Yes. And uh, Leif and I have been friends for quite a while, and uh, uh, I even helped him get his first label deal. So actually. would you would you possibly go for a, I don't know, a split vital heavy load Manila Road? Well, yeah, I that would be sort amazing. Of, sort of doubt if it never yeah. happened, but it would be amazing. But yeah, I, yeah, I'd, I'd be honored. Yeah, I mean, this is them after our show in Stockholm. That's heavy, heavy awesome. Load, yeah. That's awesome. Bro. I mean, they were yes. so showed up to the camera. L look at this. They were so. That's happy. amazing. They uh, they asked to be there. Yeah, that's amazing. They're yeah. so yeah. Uh, high class people. I, I have no other word for that. They're classy, intelligent. It's, they're gentlemen. Great, gentlemen. They're gentlemen. Yeah. Very, Very kind, gentlemen. kind people. And still in the middle. And that's still amazing. Amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And every time I told them that I was honored to meet them and to have them at our show, they're like, oh no, the honor is ours. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, no, you don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. I've been listening to you since I was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and they, they treated they treated Noidy. And myself the same as they treated Shots. Sure. Awesome. Yeah. They were very respectful awesome. and nice. That means that they gotta come back. They gotta you gotta play. Let's see. Um, yeah. Let's wait and see. When, you, when you meet these I people, hope. you realize that it's it's, it's the, more difficult than with some. Yeah, guys. I know. I can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine. I heard the stories. Just yeah. really cool, friendly people. Absolutely yeah, I'm, amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm and you influence them. That's I'm amazing. amazing. That. Those guys and Life Edling, man, they're just the That's best. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 And. Manila Road has been covered many times, numerous times, especially now. Uh, even in Poland, there was a Skull Records release, Tribute to Manila Road, the Riddle Masters. That's correct. Uh, uh, Skull? No, Skull it Records. Was, no, or it, it was it Skull was, Records, I think. Uh, no, so it was so, Solemnity. Yes, that's true. Solemnity that's Records. Germans, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Gabriel, Bart, Bart, Bart Gabriel, Wolf, they did Wolf. a... Yes. Um, Flame? Uh, Flaming Metal Systems. Flaming Metal Systems, Systems. Yeah, yeah, Viper. So Viper, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite cover song? Uh, mine is Visigot, Necropolis. That's, yes. Mine, that's, mine too. That's, um, that's, that's an amazing version. You know, uh, I have to say there's a band called Rosa Crucis. Mm. Not that bad. That, I know that band. That From Italy. Did, they were on the Riddle Masters yes. CD. Yes. And that they did, did a version of Fires of Mars. Amazing, amazing. Because they changed it a little yes, bit. They, they changed they, it a lot. They didn't and it was do it just so exactly the same. Amazing. Now, now, if you're looking for somebody that did a song of ours that was almost to the T like we did it, then I'd have to say Battle Rams. For, or no, it was uh, Jotunheim's version Listen, of Queen. You know the back coast. I, I think yeah. Byron was not. Too bad with Dreams of Ashketon. Yeah, it wasn't bad, but it didn't sound just like. Yeah, right. right. But no, no, he, see, he was. In there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I he, know. He, he wants that. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you do? I was say, <laughs> rushing your teeth. <laughs> I was. Yeah, I was <laughs> scratching your teeth. Stand up and bend over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would still go Visigoth, but that's me. That's, I, that's oh, amazing. I think Visigoth did it. That's Jay, 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 those uh, guys are great. They are amazing, I love, man. I love them. The vocals and, that they did yeah. on that version, the many chorus, oh, that's yeah. amazing. Oh, man. They, they did a, Actually, they sang the song better than I did. <laughs> and then, uh, but it's also funny is how, ma how many CDs were released the last years on big labels with a sticker on it for fans of, of Manila this, Road. this, this <laughs> Manila Road. But, but to the thing, this was one that oh. I was very impressed with. And this is, does not happen very often. Oh, we will go. Okay. We will, we will go that to that. I got a special treat to get a photo with this gentleman. Oh, yes. And Can you show it to the camera? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'd rather not oh, all right. because all right. this is a personal thing oh, right. for me. Oh, right. Sorry. But Sorry, man. Who was it? It's called 
I will go. It's, yeah, I was oh. going to quote a song, and you tell me how it makes you feel. I made my own cold, and I sold my soul to Manila Road. How did? How did? When you heard that, how did? I, I, it blew me away. Was I, like, I was just floored. I was, I, and then I, when I found out who did it, it's, I was like, "Oh my God, are you kidding me?" Yes, they did. <laughs> it's like, really? That you know? He so. came to our show and um, was this in the month? front. Yeah, <laughs> in the front row, and. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. That's awesome. It was amazing, and uh, it was one of those times where you know I was. It's just very like, surreal, man. Yeah, it is. It, it everybody was amazed when Doctor made the change to heavy metal, mm -hmm. and then they recorded that song, and everybody was yes, <laughs> yes. We wanted it to happen. All the heavy metal people wanted it to happen, and Fenris to me with that song. Uh, showed a big middle finger to his inborn audience. He had an audience of black metal guys, sure, yeah. and then he went, "No, fuck you guys. I like Manila Road and not necro black metal bands, which I yeah, yeah. Which, which which I love them. But and what what he did was punk rock. They, they've done that for a long time yeah. too, because if you look at Soulside Journey and the change that they made, yes. they, they never really followed a trend. Yes, black yeah. metal was popularized in the early '90s, but they also said, you know, we're not going to be pigeonholed as a technical death metal band not either. Only, not only that, but I think once again, you're talking about a highly artistic avant-garde musician yes. that is looking to fuse as many things, styles into into what he does, mm. just like we do. To, to me, he's kind of similar in the way he does things to to you guys. In the way that it's my vision, I'm gonna do it the way I want it. Yeah. And, and I they, love that. Yeah, yeah, and if they don't That's like it, what, fuck them. It will not yeah. always please every yes. fan of my band. Yes, you right. can't. Please it will. It will. It time. will piss off fans of my band. But you're but, gonna piss somebody off. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm gonna do it because that's what I want to do. So the new CD, The Killer King, yeah, released on June 30, 2017. My question is very simple. Tell us more. The, tell us everything you can tell us about the new album. Okay, well, it's not really a concept album. It's a, a many songs of many concepts. Okay, many stories. Uh, the, the title cut is the longest song on the album, and it's even the first song on yes, the album. Yes, that's, that's a bold decision and, to go. Uh, yeah, well, Ten minute epic. First song. Yep, absolutely. Cool. I, tell you, I tell you Doing what, what we want. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, you want like it. It. Fuck you. I, I tell you what, uh, it, it's all about always trying something a little different. We've never opened an album with a huge epic. Why not? Not. Why not? not? You know, it's something different. We're not following the same equation every time. Uh, it's always been a, a purpose of, of Manila Road that not every album sounds the same as the next one or, or any of them for that matter. Uh, to Kill a King, as far as the theme of that song, it's loosely based on Shakespeare's Hamlet. And, uh, and, but there's many other things in the album. Uh, the arena is based on Roman amphitheater, you know, arena fighting, you know, gladiators and stuff like that. We have a song called The Conqueror. It's very short, uh, but it's about Alexander the Great. Uh, we have uh, some stuff that's more modern philosophy, like uh, In the Wake, which is... Uh, uh, more, more nowday type, you know, thinking it's not really historical or anything like that, and it's sort of along the same lines as some of the Blessed Curse stuff, where it's really sort of trash and modern religion and ancient religion at the same time. And uh, then we have Never Again, which is sort of a nuclear apathy song, and uh, uh, and then we have things that are just for entertainment purposes, right. like and musically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How does it, in which direction do you go? Can you tell us something? I don't know. Well, I've been told snippet. by somebody that just did an interview uh, from uh, one of the Legacy magazines Legacy in, 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 in Germany. Uh, in Germany. Uh, he said that it sounded like we went back to our roots a little bit. And uh, it made me think about it, you know, when I was doing the interview. And I, I guess maybe we did. I, maybe I did slide back to our roots a little bit because it's... Uh, I think this is part of what's happening with me right now is that I've been doing this Hellwell stuff, yeah. And with Hellwell, there's actually no. It, we don't have to worry about the morality base, you know. It don't. It doesn't have to have a have happy ending. Happy ending. And we don't have any happy, happy endings, endings at all in Hellwell material. It's all bad stuff. Everybody dies. People die. Uh, <laughs> people die. People, people are fed to other people. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's how people call it rocks fall. Everybody dies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody dies. And. Uh, uh, so it's actually opened up a new window for me 
with Manila Road to where I can... Yes, but also he also has another project with Rick Fisher that oh. will be coming out. That okay. explores a little bit more of the rock the rock side of space it. side and, of it. And classic deal. Yes. Classic. Yes. And it's amazing stuff. Man. And it's going to come out wait it's for gonna that come out this year? Yes. Yeah, but probably a little later because, you know, we've got they don't want to... Yeah. This being our 40th anniversary see, for the band. You, yeah. We're, we you actually, don't want to minimize down. Plan. I know it looks like we did all of this just like this, but actually we've been working on all of this stuff for like two or three years. Yep. Right? And culminating up to the 40th It just so happened to all... Coincided. Yeah, well, the whole idea was for right. it to coincide in our 40th, 40th anniversary. That's awesome. And uh, so we've got the Hellwells already been out. The new Manila Road will be out. Um, the Is there a the title summer. for that album? It's you called mentioned? Bring the Magic Down. Bring the Magic Down. And, that project and, and the project's right. entitled Mark Shelton and Rick Fisher's Riddle Master. Awesome. That's awesome. It's amazing that stuff, man. That sounds awesome. And it's it up great. to the name. We, we have to, to the name. then we have to come back to the interview when you release it and do a additional take of that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That is when we have to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> no, of course. I'd That's be awesome. Honored to That's do awesome. That's also like that. With so you. the last words belong to you. The last words are. Hey, I, I, no, I think that should be something that you should do with Rick Fisher. <laughs> the last words. No, no, no. no, with, no. With, no yes, I will. I, if, 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 yeah. if we have the option, yeah, I'll maybe, go. maybe we can work out something where we between can do Skype. Do a little, yes, Skype, yes. Do like a, yes, we'll do Skype. Yeah, Rick, Rick would love it, man. Yeah, I'll go. He, he I'll go. Totally I'm already saying we'll do it. Okay, we'll do it. We'll get to. You. So the last words are off. Are always up to the interviewer, uh, interviewee, I would say. Interviewee. Yeah. Well, uh, last words to the listeners of the What The Fuss podcast and the Little Road's fan, Little Road fans listening to this and watching this. What uh, the floor fuzz, is yours. What the fuzz. Um, this has been a wonderful 40 years. Uh, I've been a part of it for 36 years now. Um, we would not be here without all of the fans here in Poland all of Europe, all of you over the world, we continue to do what we do because of you. <coughs> Absolutely. And um, I cannot appreciate more for what you do to us when we go out on stage and um, you make it worthwhile. Yeah, it's the fire that burns in your hearts that keeps the fire burning in the Manila Road Camp, that's for sure. And uh, especially to our Polish fans, since that's where we are right now, uh, our first time in Poland ever. Uh, we, we're sorry it took us 40 years. Yeah, we're sorry it took us so long to get here. But please know that we are so grateful that you were the first ones to open the doors for us in Europe by uh, playing us on Radio Warsaw and accepting Manila Road as, as music that you love. And uh, if not for you, we may not have made it even into the industry or... Uh, as far as we have at this point and uh, you know I just hope that we never forget where we came from what our roots were because uh, uh, we're really just normal people <laughs> we're really just the common folk the common metalhead just like you guys are and if not for you we don't exist if you haven't forgot it in 40 years you ain't gonna forget it now <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, give me a million dollars in a mansion in Malta and, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and some free hookers and cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm back in Germany, I would definitely tell people, hey, you need to go on a vacation to Warsaw because even I, it's not so far away from where I live. I didn't expect, I, I know that it's a nice city, but I didn't expect uh, such a nice city and the beer is really good here. <laughs> the beer kicks <laughs> ass. Yeah. 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 That's okay. He didn't even expect snakes in America. So. <laughs> <laughs> you have, oh, you have white snakes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and thank you very much. For thank you. Here. Thank yeah. you. The pleasure's all mine. And, you, uh, and, as always, mine. and as always, there's always somebody behind the scenes. Yes. That you guys in the public never see. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come out. Everybody. You too. Yeah. You too. Come, yeah. in here. Come, on. Come, on. Come in here. Come on. Get in here. Come on. You are responsible yes, for bringing us here. Come on. Get in here. This is, Come the, on. this is the promoter. That's not the promoter of the show. This is the promoter that's yeah. responsible. Yeah. For yeah. Yeah. Sit down, okay. <laughs> These, this guy's filming this stuff. It doesn't <laughs> happen without people like this. And this is the guy that had the balls 
to bring us to the bars. bars. <laughs> nobody else would. This guy's got 50 so pound bad. iron kiwis. Yeah. And come here. Hey, you back there. Let's get in yeah. here. Yeah. This here is Thor Boom. Take a picture in a moment. Yeah. This, this is guy right here. 150 kilos of badass right here. <laughs> he is I responsible for bringing us and really taking care problem. of us. Yeah. 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 Woo! Yeah. Up the hammers, Paul. Up the hammers. Down the nails. There you go. That's a cut. That's awesome. That's a cut.